if oh, I you see. don't okay. have the, if you don't have if you don't have the technical skills to be able to answer technical questions yeah. how are they going to know that you are a good a good recruiter well most of them are impressed that i even know what a 310s <laughs> license is and i'll say okay. and i'll recognize and i'll recognize the program whether they've gone the traditional route i'll say did you go the traditional route cuz sometimes they won't put a college on their resume and i have to dig a little bit if i see somebody's gone to mohawk or centennial i'm like oh i know that i know i'm involved in the program advisory committee there so i think i sell myself a little bit in with regards to my own industry knowledge and you know we start chatting and i'll say and they're like oh yeah like if for instance if it's a subaru if somebody is applying for subaru and they're coming from nissan what what will often say so what do you like about subaru it's like oh my dad had this awesome subaru he let me take it apart i'm like oh my gosh that must have been so cool i recently talked to um, um a harley davidson apprentice who's grew up with his dad's bike in the kitchen and i'm like oh my gosh that must have been so cool so really getting you know letting them know that i know a little bit but i'm not afraid to ask them to tell me a little bit more you know? if it makes it any clearer for you and anybody listening to this in a hundred years we're all going to be dead not one damn thing we're talking about is going to matter so you got to go into it and realize that what matters is what we're doing now having the right attitude not not walking around angry all the time because things didn't go exactly our way because things never go exactly the way you want and just be a little lighter, have a little fun. Look at the advantage guys like you and I have. You mentioned Russell Hill by being positive and upbeat in a world where everybody's negative and everybody's looking to tell you why it won't work or why bother or why be cynical. So again, I, I just try to be a minimalist with all the stuff. Have fun, answer your phone, talk to people in a straightforward manner. You just get a lot accomplished. There's a lot of, there's a lot of companies out there. Uh, recruiting's a big business. I did not know how big of a business this was until I got into it. Recruiting is a huge business, and there's there's a lot of money to be made, guys. Understand this. All, they're all trying, the recruiters are trying to get paid. That's what they're doing. They're commission-based roles. Uh, so it's no different than a car salesman, right? They want to talk with you. They want to get you into a company. They want to sell you to the company, and then they're, they're going to collect a commission off of the recruiting fees. That's pretty standard practice no matter what you do. Here's what here's what I recommend. You got to find a recruiter that is passionate about helping you get to the right place. Again, this goes back to my first answer or my 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 other answer right there is if you're being pushed into a place with a bad manager, you're not compatible and they're pushing you in that direction, it's all money driven. You got to find somebody that has a passion, somebody that listens to you, somebody that's willing to work with you. Uh, and they're out there. I know a lot of recruiters out there uh, that are passionate about the job, not just collecting a paycheck, but making sure that they're influencing and making the industry a better place. And that's what that's what you want to find in a recruiter. Uh, there's a lot of pushy guys. There's a lot of pushy girls out there that are going to try and just throw you at the first place. And find somebody who cares about you. Look, we can represent our clients to the best of our ability, but no one's going to be able to really sit down and get a technician to feel what it's like to work at that shop other than the technicians and the service manager themselves. You got to go in and you got to see it, but you still have to dig with the recruiter and find out what your non-negotiables are, what you're in it for, what are your whys. You know, you're you're here with this recruiter. So even if you're not, if you're just dipping a toe in and you are, like I said, there's a reason. There's something going on at your current employer that you don't feel good about. You don't wake up and go to work with the same passion that you did that first year. So figure out what that is first, right? And, you know, it could be money. Maybe you're unappreciated, but I think, you know, well, let's talk about money. I wanted to go back to what you were talking about in regard to the flat rate number. We really don't even like to work in flat rate numbers that much anymore. I'll talk to our clients and yes, it's part of the puzzle and I want to know, but they'll get real excited. They'll throw, yeah, we're doing 50 an hour. And then I get to, okay, on average, what are your best texts turning? Oh yeah, I mean, they're usually 35 to 40, right? And it gets real quiet and it comes down. So you need the entire picture and you need to have, you know, get specific, get granular with us. I'd love to have a tech take me on. Hey, I'm really interested in this place. I like what you're initially saying. I need a little more. I need to know, okay, you mentioned there's health benefits. What's the buy-in for my family? Is my family covered at all? How much do we pay? Who's providing the health insurance? Is it Blue Cross Blue Shield? You know, get very specific. Have these questions in mind. And what is one thing that a technician should look for to make sure they're working with 
a top tier recruitment agency or recruiter? Truthfully, just somebody who cares and gets back to you. <laughs> Cause I hear about it all the time. They go in and they apply blindly sometimes through, you know, third party companies, indeed, LinkedIn, all those types of opportunities. And sometimes you don't hear anything and you get mm -hmm. ghosted. And then you wonder what happened. So in order to find somebody that you truly, you know, feel like is the right fit for you moving forward, I just, again, believe in human interaction because, I mean, we've missed that during the pandemic. So having that mm -hmm. human interaction and just knowing that you're talking to somebody who cares and just getting that good gut feeling about any individual that you're talking to. If, again, and I truly believe in gut feelings. If you're going for an interview and you have a bad gut feeling like, I can't see myself driving here every day, but they offered me this much money, go with your gut because something's not right for whatever reason and just kind of take that as a loss and kind of move forward. Mm -hmm. Truthfully and honestly, just communication on both ends, just having open dialogue and open communication, finding somebody who actually cares not only about, you know, you, but getting you into the right opportunity. And, and again, I feel like, it may not be for everybody. You may not click with somebody for whatever reason. It doesn't mean that they're a bad person. But again, you just want to be able to find someone who cares and that you have good communication with. To tie that back to the recruiter, you know, and, and what does it make a good recruiter? If you understand the incentives for me is I only get paid if you start. And I only continue to get paid if you're there for 90 days. Otherwise, I got to go find someone new or I don't get paid. And so it is in my best interest to find someone that's going to be a great fit. And that's just a personal thing too. Like I have a lot of, you know, if I'm going to put my name, my name's kind of unique, uh, last name, Linehan, it's not very common. And we take a lot of pride in having a name that stands for something. And so we want to put someone awesome in there. And so if someone doesn't work out, like it breaks my heart and I feel like a failure. And so we don't want that, but I do not get paid unless they've been there you know, started their job and been there for 90 days, I don't get to keep that money. And so huge incentive to get it right for them and also right for the client. We, we don't only just try to convince people to go work. For, we, we make sure that you got to make sure that the recruiter is not worried about their fee, right? And what they're making and, you know, pushing you. You don't want to be like convinced to leave, right? You want to be given the pathway. Hey, it's a talk through. It's just like a coaching session, you know, is, Hey, is this the right decision mm -hmm. for me? And, and anybody who's like, wants to push you and get you to start right away. And that's their one goal is to collect, collect their commission is any, if you feel that right away, that's not somebody you want to work with, right? You want to work with somebody that's collaborative in your career, right? And wants better for you. You know, one of the biggest things is is what do they know about the place, right? So if, if somebody's recruiting for uh, a chain of stores or a region, like what do they know about it, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, we, we recruit in, in some some cities, Toronto, Seattle, um, Los Angeles, I've had a little bit of experience recruiting for, but do they know a lot about how to get there, what the housing prices are like, what the commuting is, is going to be like. Because if you're putting in, you know, a really good eight, 10 hour day uh, and you're having had two hours of commuting on the side, that's going to affect your life. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so do they know about the places that they're recruiting for? Right. So if, if it's an internal recruiter who's recruiting for five shops, do they know which shops are hiring? Is there intermobility between them? Do they kind of have that place knowledge? So place and price are the two things I, 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 I really emphasize. And what is the total compensation like? You know, what is, what is the pay range? What are the opportunities if you get a promotion within that organization? And what are- Oh, you go that too. Oh, cool. Oh yeah, like I, I, I'm sitting here with, with a collective agreement. so. You know, what's the pension look like? You know, what are the deductions like? If, if it's a split healthcare costs, you know, how much of that is coming off somebody's check? And you'd be amazed. There's so many companies that pay 100% of the, the benefits costs, where there's other ones, it's 50%, 50 wow. right? Mm -hmm. So if it's not that they have to know it off the bat, 
Can they find it out for you? Can they get you that information? Because you, you really want to know if you're going to take that time off from work, right? And risk your boss knowing that you're looking for a job. Um, mm -hmm. What am I moving for? And if they say, just say, oh, the pay range is this. And you're like, well, what about the, the benefits? Can you tell me more? Like, is, is there a 401k? Is there RSPs? Can you can can I get that information if they say no or oh we'll look at that later? I mean pin them down, right? This is your career. This is your this is how you're gonna retire in five, ten years. And these moves are big, right?